Welcome to today's online message from Long Eaton Oasis Christian Centre. We are a church at the heart of the community with a heart for the community. And we're so glad that you've joined us. We hope that you'll be inspired and encouraged today. Please don't hesitate to contact us. If you want to find out more, you can visit our website, www.longeatonoasis.co.uk, or you can direct message us. Well, hello and welcome. It's um, good to be with you and thank you for joining us. We're continuing a series that we've been looking at as a church called Disciple. And uh, I've been saying that a disciple is someone who wants to be with Jesus, to put it simply, to be with Jesus, to learn from Jesus so that we become like Jesus. It's as simple as that. And uh, we've been spending some time um, looking and sharing the principles of spiritual formation, of Christ being formed in us, growing in Christ. And that's what a disciple is called to. And so there's this idea of, of being with, learning from and becoming. And that's the process of spiritual formation. And we're looking at principles. And I say principles, um, not a programme as such. Programmes are helpful, but it's really principles that we take to heart that help us become with Jesus, then learn from him, and then grow in likeness. And uh, it's principles that we take to heart. And that's what we've been looking at, and that's our journey that we're on. And it's our hope and prayer that this is something that will help you grow in your discipleship of Jesus Christ. So, so far, as a, a brief recap, we've looked at this idea of one of the principles is must be born again. Jesus said this. You can't just learn from Jesus, be with Jesus and become like Jesus unless you're born again. You're born of the Spirit, born from above. It's a supernatural, spiritual re rebirth. And uh, we've been sharing that and you can look at that online and we'd love you to do that. And then we spent some time looking at then relying on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who's called alongside to be alongside us, with us and in us. Jesus went to be with the Father, but he sends the person of the Spirit to be with us, alongside us and in us. And so it's walking with the Spirit, learning from the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, relying on the Holy Spirit. We've spent some time looking at this together. Uh, then we went to move on and look at um, relating to Jesus through conversational prayer, opening our hearts, taking to heart, giving our hearts and speaking to Jesus each day, every day in, in a way of, as we would speak to the people that we love us, not flippantly, but from the heart. And I've spent a little bit of time looking at this and these are principles that come together. And as we make them as a, a rhythm of our lives, that we grow in likeness and be with Jesus and learn from him. So today, I want to take a few moments and uh, look at how the early followers of Jesus took to heart the apostles' teaching. And so this is another principle that we're going to look at over the next few moments is taking to heart the teaching of the apostles. And the teaching of the apostles is what we have today is in, gathered in the second part of the Bible, the New Testament. We believe that the whole Bible, Old and New Testament, is the inspired word of God. And particularly taking to heart the apostles' teaching, which is the New Testament. Jesus instructed his first disciples, those, those early disciples, and he, when he said to them, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you to the very end of the age, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And so Jesus has this understanding of, of being followers of him and then saying to his disciples, now make followers of the world and baptising them and bringing them and leading them so they come to a point of their own personal repentance and then teach them, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. This is the idea of teaching. That's Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20. Paul some time later, some years later, encouraged a young pastor called Timothy, and he said this. He said, in encouraging Timothy, to, he said he encouraged Timothy to read the public reading of Scripture as a, as, a, as a most important aspect of Timothy's life and ministry. And Paul said this, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful in teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is God-breathed. So the teaching, the scriptures, is 
inspired. God breathed means inspired by God. And so the New Testament, the Bible, the Old and New Testament isn't just a a, a nice book, a great book, uh, a big thick book, but it's an inspired writing. It's a God-breathed writing. Not just the ideas of men and women, but the uh, um, inspiration by the Spirit of God. And so it's a supernatural writing. It's a life-giving writing. It's the Word of God. And so Paul encouraged then Timothy to the public reading of the scriptures. At that time, it would have been the, uh, the Greek version of the Old Testament. And, um, but later on, what, what happened was that the teaching of those early apostles, so people like Paul and uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, John, these early apostles, it came from their visits, their teaching that Jesus encouraged them to teach everything that he'd obeyed, uh, to obey everything that he taught, rather. He, um, it come, came through the letters of those early apostles, which means sent ones. An apostle is a sent one, a sent one of Jesus, those early apostles. And it was from their letters and their visits. They would visit groups of people and they see a church group and they visit them and go around them and send circular letters around them sharing the, the, the heart of, of the message of the good news and of the life of Jesus Christ and how to live that life. You know, um, Paul's letters were collected together as early as the late, late first century. So within about 70 years uh, of the, the death of Jesus, the letters of Paul had started to be collected and brought together and recognised and by the end of the first century by about 150 AD so the middle of the sort of second century the gospels Matthew Mark and Luke had been collected so we have the letters of Paul and the gospels those early biographical um, accounts and writings of the life of Jesus had been recognized and collected together and were now being recognized and then over the next couple of centuries there was a debate and a recognition of other, the other writings and letters of, of the, 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 the apostles and the other, the, some of the other apostles. And finally, they were recognised the New Testament as we know it today, what we call the New Testament now, the writings of those apostles, was finally fully recognised and brought together over a length of time, but in 397 AD at the Council of Carthage. So within a reasonable time of the death of Jesus, the writings of those early sent ones of Jesus quite quickly and then over a little bit of length of time began to be recognised as inspired by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit and by God. You know, um, Jesus himself, uh, so, so there's this idea then that the, the writings of the apostles and the Old Testament is, the inspired, is inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, in his wilderness, uh, and devil-inspired temptation experience. In Jesus, the, in the Gospels, we read that Jesus falls back on the scriptures, the inspired word of God, uh, to uh, confront the devil. And he quotes from Deuteronomy, from the, the book of Deuteronomy. And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, when the devil says, turn these stones into bread, Jesus said, Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Not just by bread, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, the word of God is food for your and my soul. So, you know, the, the Old and the New Testament, the apostles' teaching, their writing, the, the, the teaching of the apostles that we're to be taught the, the, to, to obey and live like Jesus and know Jesus, it's food to the soul. Not just instruction, it's also intimacy. So we, we not only have instruction for life and how to live like Jesus, but how to know Jesus and to imbibe Jesus. So it's instruction and intimacy. And so Jesus said it's like bread. Not by bread alone, but the word of God. It's just as much sustenance to your soul. Without it, the soul can grow weak. My soul, your soul can grow weak. And so it brings instruction and intimacy. Jesus is the living word reflected in the inspired written word. And so Jesus, the word of God, John's gospel says that Jesus was in the beginning and was the word and the word is God. That's the Jesus, the living word, is also reflected in the inspired written word. And that's amazing. So when we read the written word, we can encounter Jesus, the living word. It's, it's miraculous, it's super powerful, it's supernatural. So that brings me on just to uh, encourage um, a practical approach 
to reading the New Testament, the Apostles' teaching. And so I just want to take a, the, the last few moments of my, our time together to share something that I've discovered that has been helpful to myself and I hope and pray will be helpful to you. So we're encouraged then to lay hold of the Apostles' teaching, to hold it in high regard and to take it to heart and to form a rhythm and a routine of laying hold of the teaching of the Apostles, reading in the New Testament. And we can discover the living Jesus in that living word. And there is an approach, um, an approach to divine reading. It was the, the early believers and, and the early church had an approach called divine reading, where they would learn to feast on the word of God. They would feast on that which God was, the scriptures that they had before them. Why? Because Jesus is alive in the word. The living word is inspired in the inspired written word. And such was their understanding that they would look to feast on that written word of God so that they would feast on the very bread of heaven, Jesus himself. And so there's, there's this idea of um, feasting on the word of God. And so um, I'm just going to share something practical. It, it basics around the to read, reflect, respond and rest. Read, reflect, respond and rest. And um, here's a practical outline of something that, that I believe could transform the way in which you approach the reading of the New Testament and take into heart the Apostles' teaching and aiding and helping you grow in your and my discipleship. First of all is take a moment to pray. Uh, I, I would say this is probably about, this could be about 20 to 30 minutes at the most uh, in your day. So it's not really a lot when you consider the whole day. But take a moment, first of all, to just take a moment to still your heart, quiet for a moment, find a place and a space, and just a minute to just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus in what you're about to read. You take a passage or a, a few verses or, or um, a chapter in the New Testament that you're reading through and say, Holy Spirit, will you just reveal Jesus to me? Make your, the word come alive. It builds a sense of anticipation. It's coming to dine, it's getting ready to feast and it, it builds the heart and invites the Holy Spirit to just come and make the word of God alive to you. This is more than a reading and a reading exercise that I've got to get through, but just take a moment and you begin to find that the more that you pray like this, the more that you begin to find that the word of God will become alive in your heart. First thing then is, uh, is read. So just take a moment to just take a, 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 a couple of moments to read through the passage, the verses, the chapter that is before you. Just, just a first time reading. Don't try to rush through it and, and don't try to figure it all out. But just um, read it gently uh, and, and see what comes to you. See what phrase or word comes to heart. Um, what grabs your attention? And just wait there for a moment or two. So what I do is I, I read through. This is, the, uh, this is what the early fathers, uh, uh, an approach that the early church fathers took and encouraged the early church. So slowly read through and see what comes to heart, what comes to mind. It might be just a verse, a thought. Uh, the other day I was reading in the Old Testament and it said that King Jehoshaphat inquired of the Lord before he did anything. And uh, I was reading a couple of chapters, but in that, it was that he inquired of the Lord before anything. And that was what jumped out to me at that moment. And I just reflected on that and uh, took that to heart and uh, not try to work it all out. And what does this mean? What does that mean? But just see. And that, so that's the first thing is to read. Then the next, and that might only be, say, I don't know, three, four, five minutes, let's say. Then the next few moments, reflect. And in reflect, what we do is we we slowly and prayerfully maybe read the passage again and what is God now saying? What is that verse? What is that, that word that's jumped out? What is God speaking to me on? What, what is God asking? What is God asking of me? What, what, what feelings are, are arising in my heart as I begin to read this? It might be bewilderment. It, it may be that your heart is being warmed. It may be an encouragement. It, it might be, oh, this is something that God is calling me to do. Oh, th oh this is something that's inspiring me. I, it could be any of those things, but you, you reflect. So first of all, read. It, it's like taking a bite. You read. Take a moment. You take a bite. Reflect. The reflection stage of your reading again, maybe a second time, is chewing over. 
So you take a bite with your food, remember we're feasting, and then you begin to chew over, and you think over, and you, and you meditate, and you chew over. Uh, that might be in, you know, another three or four minutes, perhaps, something like that. And uh, the third thing, the third stage, or the third part, is um, savouring. You know, when you take a bite and you begin to chew, it's to actually taste it. So take a moment, don't rush this, and savour. What I mean by that is slowly but prayerfully, as you read that passage, um, respond to God with your heart. Speak to God about your feelings. What, what's happening, what the, the insight that's coming to you from that, that moment, that passage. Um, uh, offer your heart to God. And it, it's a way of just reading, then reflecting, um, chewing over. Now savour, you take a bit of a step back and, and you offer your heart and, and uh, see what, what's happening in your soul. Final, rest. And uh, this is like digesting. So it's, 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 it's take a bite, chew over, savour, now rest. And the resting part is where you just sit in silence. Silent moment. It might be only just for a minute or two minutes. Uh, don't try and say anything. Don't try and think anything over. It's like soaking in God's presence. It's taking to heart. Uh, you might not feel anything. Uh, other times you can feel a great hope and joy. It, it might be a, a, a sense of concern. But just take to heart. Just Take a moment to digest. Um, as you've read that passage, you sit quietly in the presence of God, um, resting in his love. Listen to what he has to say. Now, for me, there are times when I don't fully say something, but more in, often than not now, what is beginning to happen for me is that God is beginning to speak. He might just say a, a verse or a phrase uh, of, to take to heart. Read, reflect, respond, rest and uh, it's as straightforward and as challenging as that and you know, all of that could be something in about 20 to 30 minutes I, i'm not saying you have to time it it could be less than that it could be maybe a little bit more but uh, it's a, it's a, it's an what the early church what the early fathers taught in getting the feel to what jesus is saying they believe so much that jesus the living word is in the written word that you get a sense of jesus speaking to your heart by the power of the holy spirit uh, it's more than just a study. We're not looking to necessarily sometimes to, to study it. There is a, there's a place for study, but this is a devotional coming close to Jesus. There is a place and a time for study where you look at and you debate with others, but this, in your own personal, there is this coming close to Jesus. Try to build, I would say this, try to build um, a rhythm, a repetition um, to a life-giving routine. Uh, remember something I said a, a, a week or so ago, repeated moments build momentum. And uh, just moment by moment, you trip over, you miss a few days, well then just come back again. You miss maybe four or five days, well come back again. And you find repeated moments begin to build a momentum. What you don't feel at first begins to rise in your heart. Helen Keller said this, unless we form the habit of going to the Bible in bright moments, as well as trouble, we cannot fully respond to its consolations because we lack equilibrium between light and darkness. Habitual. There's this rhythm, finding our own routine. And you know, my prayer as we come to close uh, today is that you will find Jesus the Word come alive to you in the Word. I really pray that that is something that jumps. He is someone who jumps in your heart and jumps out of the page as it were by the power of the holy spirit god bless you and thank you for joining us today Gonna let me down 
You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're you're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down I'm good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, yes, you are good, good. Oh, you are good. Good. Yes, you are. You are good.